Generation 2, and then it captures other things. It captures a lot of the Generation 1's uh, more powered up concept in Diaclone with the um, energy vents coming off of his helmet. It captures the more movie aesthetic of the sword without actually integrated in, integrating that design into his arm, just leaving it as a more classic weapon. But he gets the design down with this old bracer piece. And the tech detail. And it's not a rubber sword. I don't know how they were able to figure out how to get this past safety um, lately. Because I've been seeing a lot of rubber swords with guys like Drift and Bludgeon. But wow, this is a nice, pointy, translucent orange sword. And um, the uh, United version has a blue sword, but I don't think it looks as good as this orange one. I mean, ultimately, the orange color is supposed to homage the G1 Optimus Prime's um, Energon axe, uh, so which was also orange, and that, so that just looks great. Some people will say that, well, the orange light piping because that's all tied to the mold, but uh, and you'd rather have the blue light piping, which is more how modern Optimus looks in comics and in fiction, just because Autobots have blue eyes net these days. But Generation 1 Optimus Prime had um, yellow eyes. Admittedly, they weren't orange eyes, but at least it does give you a more dynamic and uh, different look. Uh, now, Generation 2 Optimus Prime, which this guy is supposed to be an homage to, and hopefully it will be repainted into either Scourge or Nemesis Prime or whatever. Toxitron would be nice. But anyway, in robot mode, it's just, it's got the shoulder cannons. It's got a full range of head movement. It's one of the first Lexes to really try to be an articulate transformer that looks so nice. It has these, it has not only the full range of wrist articulation, wrist rotation rather, but it has a, it has a wrist tilt, which is something you see in more importy kind of uh, Gundam or. Um, or Macross or Revoltech stuff. But here it is, just on a simple hinge, and it gives the sword wielding possibilities of this toy so much more of an edge than you would have had on a Transformer 10 years ago. Because you can actually give it that tilt that gives him the heroic heroic poses. Or have him or have his shoulders, which also give him a broad range lift that sword up over his head dramatically and ready for the final kill. The sword gives him so many more posing options. It's astounding. And the wrists help the sword posing look more natural. Continuing on to the transformation. Obviously, let's remove the sword, which has a pretty cool gimmick in it. of unfolding and then pulling that down essentially and it becomes a trailer hitch for later. This whole upper section elevates. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell but there is some detailing in the chest that provides it with a uh, and with a matrix of leadership of sorts. It's just sort of on panels that fold in in a bit. But um, you, I've seen people who have painted these up, that those details up, so they show up nicer in like some Krylon silver or something. Very cool. So let's get the wrists out of the way. As you can see, these will form the front of the chest. And unlike Generation Two Optimus Prime, uh, this one doesn't cheat with the backpack, giving him a nice silhouette overall. Better than Generation Two Optimus Prime in that regard. Flip this up, rotate the head in, there's your shield. Before I get this too carried away, I gotta remember to
I needed to do this before I put the head down. Pop in those orange doors before they become orange windows, I should say, before they become too much of a complication. And there you go. With that, now let's line it up like we had it. Line up the tabs on the arms so they meet up. These wheels do some neat stuff with um, unfolding coming to the side. Or do they rotate? I can't recall. I think they're fine. Yeah, they're fine. You have to flip these black panels all the way out. From the inner leg to the top of the truck. There's four of them. They click nicely. The feet go under the truck. Tabs cover up as much blue as they can. Almost there. Just gotta do some fine tuning. Roll the backpack, of course. Pull that down. The blade goes in first. And the handle folds in as well. Now there are some connections here, which I will connect off screen. And once you get that secured and these tightened up, he's complete, um, mostly. And it's a pretty great little semi-truck. There's some coloring choices that are kind of strange, but they're pretty much based on the Generation 2 Laser Optimus Prime toy, uh, with some liberties taken to get these, like, orange panels up here. But it's really great how much of this stuff. How he's got these double-decker wheels back here, and how he's got the single wheels up here, making him like eight, and making him a ten-wheeled vehicle, essentially. So that's pretty awesome. Even though, like, these are just a big single wheel, but that gives him plenty of traction anyway. And the engineering to get him get those uh, back wheels into place uh, more than makes up for the fact that they're not separate wheels if that was even an issue for anyone to begin with. He has the smokestacks that aren't shortened. They are up there. They are nice. And uh, overall I think it's a great looking at this prime. The flames don't look that bad against black. Um, yeah, it's a sort of a movie Optimus Prime thing, but you know, kids who are, are into movie Optimus Prime, uh, this will have some appeal to them. Um, and as and Laser Optimus Prime had flames anyway; he was like the first one to have those flames. So you get an homage, you get something that appeals to the kids. It's like when my hands are on fire, gorgeous. Ah, that's something you don't get in the United release. Is the classic rub symbol. Yeah, he's an Autobot, folks. Optimus Prime is an Autobot.